what it is, you guys. Thank you for running errands with your girl. Uh, I am headed up in the Walmart because I'm going to go pay my credit card bill. Um, and then I'm going to come back out to the, to the parking lot, record today's video, and then head back in to, um, maybe I should record the video first. Wouldn't that make more sense? That way, while I'm in there, um, yeah, that makes more sense. Instead of two trips, I can do one. So while I'm up there letting it upload, I could be um, making a credit card payment. That makes more sense. All right, so back to the car. Okay, I'm back in the car. So I wanted, oh, first I got to do my intro, girl. What it is, you guys, it is your girl, Cadillac. Yes, I'm Cadillac Dixon. I am the drama life prison wife. I'm the legally blind artist that is rapping and painting for justice, <sighs> hoping to see justice before all face to black. Yes, it's your girl, Cadillac. Anyways, today is February the 5th. Yes, 2023. This is the year for me. This is the year I just listened to this one girl. Yes, it was so nice. Maybe I should run back a little bit of what she was talking about. And then once I run that back and let y'all hear it, y'all can go to the description box, check her whole video out because that really filled me up this morning um, and got me feeling, you know, feeling like I should be feeling. Now in this video, the young lady is comparing the devil to Devo from Friday. Yes, from Friday. She laughed even before she made this comparison, but um, she has a whole point in making the comparison. So she also says you have to have had to seen Friday to understand her message. Okay. That they could fight him, that they could whoop him, that they can defeat him. Talking Come about on, Devo. Catch this message, but what happened in the end of that movie? Mm -hmm. This bully, he got this knocked the that F out. Feared, <laughs> this person that everybody was scared of, this, this person, it was, it's like God showed me, it's like if it's as if he was like a giant, as if he was like a giant, and nobody felt like nobody wanted to face him, like nobody could touch him, nobody could knock him down. But what happened at the end of the movie? He was defeated. What happened at the end of the at the movie? He was defeated, right? And mm -hmm. at the point that he was defeated, at the point that he was defeated, all respect was lost. All fear was lost. From that point on, it was nobody in that neighborhood that was afraid of him anymore. Mm -hmm. Because they, they didn't think that he could be defeated. They didn't think that he could get whooped. They didn't think that he could get knocked down, but he got knocked down. He was defeated. It took somebody, it took somebody in that neighborhood to, to conjure up enough courage. Craig. It took somebody mm -hmm. to conjure up enough, enough strength to be like, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. No more are you going to keep doing this. No more are you going to keep putting this fear in me. I'm ready to face mm. you. I'm ready to go after you. I'm ready to defeat you. It took one person that was able to do that. That freed the entire the entire neighborhood. Yeah. Because from that point forward, nobody feared him. And remember when he got knocked down. Remember when he was like laid out on the ground. People was coming over there. People was coming up to his face in his face laughing mm -hmm. at him. People was snatching back the stuff that he stole from them. That People part. Was, like it was devil. I need all my it stuff you took from, from me. From that point on, yes. once they saw that this bully, once they saw that this person that they feared, that he was no longer, he was he he was he was able mm -hmm. to be defeated. That he was no longer scary. He was no longer a giant. You think that he was able to walk to to keep walking around that neighborhood thinking that people was about to be afraid of him? And even when you think about the, what's that next Friday? Like mm. he was a joke. He was a joke. And remember his brother was like making fun of him. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to catch this. Y'all got to catch this. Remember his brother making fun of him in the, like the. In now the remember Friday? she's like, boy, remember likening Devo like, to the devil. Nobody. It, it, he was a joke from that point on. Nobody Devil's had any fear towards him. He was defeated. He defeated over he my was life. Defeated. He was no knocked more. down. No Y'all catch more. this message because this is what God is saying mm. about you. This yes. is how God said that you are approaching the enemy. Your mm -hmm. enemies in 2023. That you are defeating the, the year enemy. For me. In the same way that that enemy, that that bully was defeated. 
Mm-hmm. And no, and people were no longer afraid of him. There was nothing else that he could do. There was nothing else that he could send. There was nothing else that he could try to steal. That's it. That's God. That's how God says wow. you are walking in 2023. Thank you. That's how God says you are yes. defeating the devil. You are defeating his schemes. You are snatching back. You are stealing back everything that he stole. From everything you. that he and done stole out. from me. He done stole the the health and the blood flow in my limbs to create. Knowing that I have a great gift of creativity that's been instilled in me by the Lord. Yes, given to me. It's a gift. I picked up my pencil one day and found out I can draw. I heard somebody do a poem and found out I can write beautiful poems. So these are gifts. This is nothing that I have um, cultivated in myself, right? And the way that he stops my gift... Is through now my hands tingling. This this hand that's holding this phone right here tingling like a MF right about now. Yes. Um, that's how he stops me from creating, from doing, from being able to have those careers, those creative careers, because the also fear, fear has been instilled in me that I because me going job to job to job because of my disabilities. Now the fear has set in that if I were hired by this company, that what happens when I cannot complete the job description that they have set forth that I have to do due to my carpal tunnel. I'm sorry, my contact is really hurting me. It didn't soak too well. I actually fell asleep with it in my eye, which is not good. Because I wear these hard gas permeable contacts. Um, that as well. My vision has also been a, a, one of those things that has held back my creativity. But despite all of that. And those things limit the gift. The gift that God gave me. But no more. No more. I am asking for healing of my hands. My, my eyesight. My back. Anything that causes me to not be able to be who I was set for to be. And if I am set for to be that person with disabilities, then the disabilities, I will still be able to create and do what I'm supposed to do within the realm of having the disabilities. No longer will they be the reason that I cannot succeed and move forward. So I'm taking that back. No longer am I going to live in lack. No longer am I going to live on the lowest rung of the totem pole because there is too much in me. Too, God has given me too much to work with, to be struggling, living check to check, and then seeing myself 20 years later, worse off than I was at 20. Baby, that got to be a lie from the pits of hell. Or from the pits of jail, like I like to say, because jail is just like hell. That has got to be a lie from the pits of jail. No. I'm supposed to live abundantly. The abundant life that God intended for me. And not just me, my, my offspring. Our daughter, money, is not supposed to be here struggling tooth and nail, struggling, following the same broken patterns that I created. Because in my not being able to provide enough, it spun off the pattern of now our daughter in the same cycle. Well, those cycles are breaking. My mother broke a very big generational curse. And that's really what I wanted to get into um, in this video. But I kind of got off on a tangent, girl. But also my family. Devo, D D Debo, devil, you finna give me my family back. I'm taking my family back. My husband is free. My husband is coming out of them prison doors. He's coming home. You've had him long enough stuck in a jail cell, in a prison cell where he does not deserve to be. And, and, and you know what? You're going to have to let go the rest of them hostages, hostages you have as well. Because my husband ain't in no way the only one wrongfully convicted. And, 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 and you, you, you got to let her go. It, it, it's over. So I'm taking back my health, my wealth my family, my dreams. 
because of me struggling so bad, I have let go of my dreams one by one. I let my dream to have more kids go because of this impossible, wrongful conviction. I let go of my dreams of being an artist because of me hustling, grinding, and not getting nowhere. I have let go almost every dream that I've ever had in my life. And I want my dreams back. I'm taking my dreams back. I'm taking my dreams back. Yes, this year. Who's really behind the scenes? Who's really like these spirits? These spirits behind these people. It's, it's not even the people. It's yeah. these spirits. It's the devil. It's the thoughts. It's the lies. It's the things that the devil is doing. No longer. No longer will I continue to, to let him win. No longer mm -hmm. will I continue to let him defeat no. me. No longer. And, and when I say this, yes, I, I get frustrated about things. Yes, like, yes, I get angry about mm -hmm. things. Yes, you're going to be frustrated about things. Yes, you might get angry about things, but it's different. It's different when you really look at, when you really understand the bigger picture, when you really understanding, like, the devil, like, you, you start seeing things for what it is, like, mm. when you can really sit back and be like, devil, you're a lie. You're a lie. And I believed his you lies for too like, long, like say for too example, long, y'all. Say for example that that person that you done that you done got over that person that you know that God told you this person not for you. This this person don't got no business being in your life. You ain't talked to this person in months. You ain't you know you done got to a place of healing. You done got to a place you ain't even think about that stuff no more. Then all of a sudden out of nowhere, out of thin air, here come this person out of nowhere texting you, hey. Or, you know what I'm saying? Stuff, like, you got to look at stuff like that. Like, you know that's nobody but the devil. Because you know that you've already, like... You yeah, so I am going... Her name is Ashley B. I'm going to link her video in the description box below. The algorithm showed me just what I needed to see at the time in my life that I am in. I do believe I am in a new season in my life. My last season lasted a long time. A long time my season lasted from 2002. Basically, I'm telling you, that is where I could pinpoint that the struggle of my life started. Not just because my husband was gone. Not just because, oh, my husband's gone. What do I do? Like, girl, I can deal without a man. Like, Y'all see that. It had been 20 years. I can deal without a man. It also spun the part of me having to overwork myself because I no longer was just that one mother. I became mother and father. I had to be two. I had to make two incomes. I had to be two people for our child. And that became a overburdening. And it, even be beyond being two parents, I had to become a freaking lawyer, an advocate. I had to become a student because I knew that I wanted to come up. I no longer wanted to stay and live the rest of my life at the bottom. I'm tired of being a bottom dweller. I'm tired of having so much talent and so much in me and I still live and reside at the bottom because I'm depending on a job to take care of me. A job that is only paying me. Girl, I had the perfect, the perfect saying. Y'all know how when I be walking around work, my mind don't never stop. I'm always thinking about something. When they see me staring off into space, they like, girl, what you think about? We already know it's some type of poem, song, saying, phrase. So I run over, I rush to the um, front. I work in a restaurant. I grab the little Sharpies that they use to write the people names on the on the bags and stuff, on the to-go bags. I grab the Sharpie and I get the writing in my hand. And they're like, Kita, you don't know, there's paper. They invented this thing called paper. It's better than skin. And I'm like, yeah, nope. Because every time I look in my hand, I want to remember this. Because I said something yesterday. I was like, my thoughts, if I don't capture them, then I will lose my thoughts forever. So when I come up with something brilliant, girl, if I don't write it down or take a little memo and um give it to leave it to myself then I definitely I'm going to lose it and what I said about a job they say it's the cost of living the cost of living has went up right 
But basically, it's not the cost of living. How are we living when we're constantly consumed in paying bills and working? What what other part? You really mean to tell me God created us to pay bills and come here to work? So that means that's not the cost of living. That's the cost of surviving. Because now we're all in survival mode. Survival mode. You know what survival mode is? When you do what you got to do to survive. That is living in survival mode. They only pay us enough to live in survival mode. So it's a cost of survival, not the cost of living has went up. To be living, you got to make way more than a cost of surviving. But they want us to think otherwise that, oh, we giving you a livable wage. And every time they raise the minimum wage, have y'all noticed the cost of living raises two to three times more. So we might as well not got no um, minimum wage raise. What is the, it's, it's actually hurting us than helping us. But yes, I declare everything that was taken and stolen from me, from my family. And she went on in that um, in that video to say everything stolen. You're going to get you're not only going to get your stuff back, girl. So I'm not only going to get my husband home. I'm not only going to have my miracle baby, Lord willing. And even not e even if it ain't um, true birth. I do want to adopt a child in the future. I love kids. I love kids. I've already adopted a million kids. That's why I keep them around me. But I'm getting my place to stay. I'm getting a stable place to stay. And I'm getting my career. I am going to be that artist. Yes. So not only am I getting all my stuff back. Girl, she even went on to say, God told her we finna get back our generations before stuff. You mean to tell me I can get back everything that the devil stole from my mama, from my, my father, from, yes, my mother, the, the devil stole a lot from her. As hard as my mother worked, but now I know she's getting her rewards in heaven, which heavenly rewards are way better than earthly rewards, right? But the devil stole a lot from her. As hard as she worked, I watched my mother at age 53 walk across the stage. My mother had got her master's. She went back at age 48. This is why I wanted to talk about that situation of Fantasia and people making fun of her because she's going back to school at her age. Well, baby, I don't think she's 48 yet. And it wasn't no laughing situation where my mother went back to school at age 48 after raising five girls and two grandchildren. After working full time at a job, after being on everything in the church, being a Sunday school teacher. After, and my mother didn't just take that lightly being a Sunday school teacher. She fell asleep in her Bible and in her books. She took that to heart. And taught every Sunday morning. She was on the trustees with the money, the finances. And my mother was wonderful with finances. And she went to school for um, for business. My mother was so business minded. And that was her dream to open a restaurant. She wanted a Chick-fil-A so that her, her, her children would always have a job. We were supposed to buy that Chick-fil-A in her honor and, and have that for all of us to be employed. But I mean, we all kind of went our, our separate ways once my mother passed. And she also wanted to do a t-shirt business with me. I'm going to get that t-shirt business. It, it, we going to get that up and running. I can do that part, mom. My mother wrote me a business plan. And it's on my computer now. And she told me, Keita, this is a real business. This is a real business plan that you can use. But see, by me being so down by all the things the devil has taken from me, I, I, I my, my vision gets clouded. See, I'm legally blind, but you can spiritually be legally blind as well. But guess what? I see clearly now. I'm seeing clearly. I'm seeing a full circle moment, like for real in my life. And at 53, my mother was so happy. 
all she could talk about. I'm graduating. I'm getting my degree. I mean, my mother was graduating, 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 graduating. She graduated three times. This was her third time graduating. And she actually was going back to school. She was taking a break. She was getting that kidney stone removal so she can get a health in order. And she wanted to go for her doctorate. Well, she went in six months after graduating at 53 with her master's and the doctor botched her surgery they could have saved her but they sent her off to the er and left her there to pass away it wasn't until the next morning that the doctor showed up way too late trying to do what they should have been doing the night before and she was gone due to the negligence of them. The, he knew that when he did that surgery, she did not come out well. So rather than trying to do something for her then, they sent her off and let her be in pain over. Girl, I can't even go down that road. Not right now. right? Ugh. But you mean to tell me I'm finna get back what the devil stole from my mother as well? Oh, this finna be big. This is finna. What about what they stole from our ancestors? I know y'all like to forget that and brush that under. Oh, that was a long time ago. What about what they took from generations upon generations from my people? What? What about that? You talking about getting that back, girl? But they making fun of Fantasia for going back to school. Do you know what my mother going back to school at forty eight and graduating at? 53 meant what it did it made me my old self who couldn't accomplish nothing who couldn't do nothing who decided at her graduation dinner to go back to school at age 34 six months now i guess six is coming into our life a lot of times because six months after her graduation she passed away um, and she was so beautiful. She was so happy. She let money do her nails. I, her, my mother was so beautiful. Girl, in six months after I went to college and my mother seen me go to college and I knew I made her proud. Finally, your loser child that don't do nothing right, that ends up in all these crazy situations has went back to school. And my mother showed me how proud she was of me going back to school. Age 34, six months later, my mother passed away in between semesters in between the semester so the semester ended and I couldn't wait to go home and tell my mama about how all the I struggled through the tests and this and this and that but I made it and then I went to sign up for classes and they dropped me out them classes and I wanted to cry to my mother like mom every time I try to do something it's always something else that happens I wanted to talk to her and she reassured me but she died right in between that session. It was literally one week in between. And I was going to drop those classes. I had the, the, the phone in my hand trying to drop the class. And I promise you the phone kept jumping out of my hand. It was like she did not want me to drop those classes. And I said, I cannot continue on in college. Because every time I do something good, every time I try to do the right thing, bad things always happen to me. It always does. I don't care how many steps forward I take. It's always something to knock me all the way back to the back of the line, y'all. I'm telling y'all. That's why people always talk about how negative I am. But it is so. it has been so hard for me to forget all the bad things that have happened in my life. Oh, uh, girl, hold on. It is hard for me to forget those things, but I can't keep dwelling right there. And I took that semester off. I, I managed to take that semester off. But I went back the next semester. And I finished school at age 39 during the year of 2020. The great reset. The great shutdown. And that threw me off my rocker. Because had I stayed on the, the, the path I was on. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure I would have been in my career. I'm looking at all my other, you know, colleagues that I went to school with and how they doing. They live in their dreams. And I'm looking at myself with my degree. That means nothing because I'm still clocking in. Give me one more moment. And I'm looking at myself like a disgrace, like Keto. No matter what you do, it always crashes and burns. You never... 
<laughs> though you can achieve alkalase, you you achieve that car that um cosmetology a certificate, but it's just another plaque to hang on your wall because you can't do hair because of your hands. The graphic design degree and that technical um certificate in web design is just 